Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be a brand new type of video. So this is going to be uh, a new battle league. So this is going to be the ABL, the Amateur Battle League. And uh, this is going to be doubles league. So uh, this is all very new to me. Hopefully um, there'll be a little bit of a kind of draft breakdown type of thing. But um, yeah, this is going to be my first time kind of using the Y-Con to battle. It was really, really strange to me. But it was really simple to set up and I really want to get into it. This, this is going to be... Um, a GMAX and a restricted format, so it's going to be incredibly strange to me, but here we go. I'm actually going to try to take a screenshot really quickly. But we will see the Excadrill Gigalith. Excadrill Gigalith. Indeedy. Grimmsnarl. Mewtwo and Noivern. So right off the bat, that means no Toxapex. No Toxapex is actually huge. That is legitimately huge. No Gavantula, no um, no Sigalif, no Pangoro is really interesting. Uh, no Pangoro and no Toxapex helped me out quite a bit, uh, actually. Um, but he brought a lot of the big, big threats that I would have uh, thought to see here. Now, I really kind of want to lead off with my... With my... Chandelure... And I'm trying to think of what I could put next to it. Part of me just wants to lead off. I think this is a solid lead here. Now, one of my biggest concerns here is whether or not I'm kind of overprepared for the Mewtwo, right? I have a lot of things I can kind of deal with the Mewtwo decently well, but at the same time, um, I don't know if I put too much thought into that and put too little thought in, into this. That's that's a this is a big big reason why uh, the Toxic Effects not being here is, is huge for me because. I really don't think I had the most for Toxapex outside of my Vicavolt. And what else? Um, the Grim Snarl is kind of difficult for me. I do have the, the, the Eternatus. Um, some other things here and there are just kind of going to be difficult for me. So I'm going to try to manage it as best as I can. But um, I don't know. It's going to be tough. It's going to be really, really tough. Uh, but we're into it as much as we can be, right? I'm really nervous. Okay, we do see the Noivern and the Indeedy. Noivern and the Indeedy. Now, I'm trying to think of whatever kind of crazy, kind of craziness could come out here. I really want to double tack, double tack the Indeedy, but I don't think that's necessary quite yet. Um, I kind of just want to go for the really standard, does have the Psychic Seed for the Special Defense, which I believe is going to make him be able to take a Bug Buzz, if I'm not mistaken. Um, now what I'd really like to do is Shadow Ball, but I'm kind of afraid of the, of the follow me here. So let me see. Um, I believe I take, I believe I KO an Indeedy with just a Bug Buzz normally, but with the plus one de uh, special defense, it's going to be kind of tough. I really do feel like I need to, yeah, I'm going to try to Shadow Ball into this and Bug Buzz into the Indeedy. I'll try to get some damage off that way. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I think the biggest... Okay, so it doesn't go for, for follow me immediately. I do reveal Scarf, but it, it, it will get a bunch of damage off. Uh, it does go for the Heat Wave, which is really interesting. I can absorb that with a Flash Fire. Although it's not going to power up my moves because I am Scarfed into this. Um, uh, it does go for the Imprison. So I think that's meant to kind of deal with any Trick Room. But Bug Buzz should do a whole lot of damage. It does not do nearly enough to straight up KO. Now, again, we're just going to have to see how supportive this indeed is. Because it's already showed off two of its moves. Um, now, it's, it could also have the following, but I would leave it to one offensive move. Which would be interesting, but I'm not sure what I would do about that regardless. I think I'd do the same thing, potentially. Um... Yeah. I mean, the Vicavolt is a lot less important now that it's hurt as much as it is. Um, but I'm going to see. I'm going to see however, however we can manage this. It does withdraw. So that's interesting. Um, I'd be curious to see a, a an expanding force come out here. Knowing that the Indeedy is safe, 
Um, but that would potentially mean that, that that's the only offensive move for the for the Indeedee. There's the expanding force. And this will allow me. Hmm. Part of me just really wants to go out into this thing. Hmm. Being locked into Shadow Ball is not ideal for me. What I probably should do. Hmm. What should I do here? Yeah, I guess I have to do this. I guess I have to make this play. And then I almost have to swap out here. I could probably just go into the Togekiss here and be moderately safe by doing this and then and then I'm kind of forced to attack into this No, I think I I might have to I might have to take out the the Ndidi right now. But I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. Yeah, yeah, this is exactly what I mean about um, kind of over, over preparing for the Mewtwo. Because while I still have options for the Mewtwo, it's going to make it difficult if... If, um... I kind of don't have enough offense to, to, to kind of uh, deal with the rest of this. Especially with these offer typings like the Indeedee in particular. Um, but I really don't want to lose to the Mewtwo, right? Like, I think losing to the Mewtwo would be, um... As bad of a proposition in this matchup as as you know can happen right now so that's the biggest thing that i'm trying to avoid although who knows does double out with this thing so it looks like i will be able to take out the ndd for free which is honestly mildly huge it'll it'll allow it'll allow my surf edge to, to to first impression for free for certain oh, no it does it doesn't mean that okay so there's the expanding force there's the expanding force, which does a whole lot of damage to the Eternatus. Um. So how do I manage this? How do I manage? I mean, I have to attack. Hmm. I'm trying to think here. I don't think follow me is going to do anything here. Hmm. How do I manage this? Part of me wants to yawn into the Ndidi in case it switches out. But, man, I don't know. I really don't want to go down to a, to a rock slide here, but I might... It, it's it's not impossible here. Although I don't, the thing is I don't think the inter the Eternatus. It, okay, avoids the Thunder Wave. Um, we do avoid it, which is insane. So I think what I have to do here is follow me and follow me and recover. Um. Shows the exit draw up, which is huge. Huh. This is a really difficult position to be in. I can potentially yawn into this. And then... Would he go for the... Hmm. I feel like he has to go for the EQ, right? Which means I could make this play. I could make this play. I might have to. I'm, I'm gonna go for it. Huh? 
Because I think, I don't know, the most likely scenario is that he goes for the... That is a lot of damage. That's life orbed. I was gonna say the most likely scenario is that he goes for the... Hmm. Yeah, this is potentially really bad. Okay. Um... So I still do have my Surfetch, and, and I still do have a Falling Asleep Exudro on this turn. I could potentially go into Surfetch to protect as I... As I... Um... As a hurricane. I think at this point, it's my only way out, yeah. I have to just kind of brute force some KOs with, with my Surf Edge here. But yeah, I think... I think my chances are okay. They're not great, but they're okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I have to choose target. Um, yeah, this is as good as play as any, because I, I don't think I'm getting any damage off on the Giggle, no matter what happens. So, I'm just going to have to see. I don't know. I don't know. This is not a good position to be in. Um, my Pokemon are heavily, heavily damaged, and, uh, again, it's just a matter, I think, of relying too heavily on ways to beat the ways to beat the Mewtwo because uh, that's what a lot of my team was geared for although this is kind of the end game as well that my team is, is is geared for so I think if there's any way to kind of brute force my way out of this it's going to be with um, this setup here but it's going to be a really difficult position for me to break out of a very very difficult position and if I just get O-Code by a high, high horsepower, then that's worst case scenario. But um, he does go for the Protect, which means not a whole lot, but it does mean... Hmm. I mean, it doesn't mean nothing, right? Let's go for the superpower. So I, I will be able to get a second airstream off as I'm able to. Actually, this thing is going to fall asleep. This this exodrill. So with a sleeping exodrill, with a sleeping exodrill, I could potentially focus down onto the focus down onto the. Gigalith, which I might just have to do here. Max Knuckling isn't going to do a whole heck of a lot, so it's probably too early for that. Um... Maybe just attacking into the Exodro slot. Oh, this is tough. No, you know what? I'm, I, I, I'm gonna just go with the original plan. No, but I, I feel like I have to airstream, though. I feel like I have to airstream. Goes for the protect, which is unfortunate, but... It's definitely not the worst thing in the world. I think... I think, honestly... That might be best case scenario, because I don't drop my, my stats at all. And I get to airstream up. If the Gigalith is, is allowed back in, that's going to be a huge problem, but I outspeed the Mewtwo, and I can get myself to, to plus one attack on this next turn. So I outspeed the field, and I can max Knuckle. So with the Mons out, 
I think I have to poison... No. No, I think I have to try to take this where it is. And Max Knuckle. Into this slot as well. Yeah, he tried to protect. Which, truthfully, is his best opportunity here. But, um, now this Anaconda is going to be in a position where I can... I'm going to have raised attack. And I'm going to have to see how much damage this Gigalith can output um, with my lower defenses. Goes for the rock slide. Okay, okay. And I actually get sand back up for him. Okay. So if he was able to protect, then I would have been in an, in a pretty awful position. I would have been in a pretty awful position. But as it stands, I think I don't know, man. Surf fetch is at plus two speed and plus one attack. This thing comes on out. So, let, let me just see a max HP Grim Snarl. If this is a max HP Grim Snarl. Oh man, Dynamax might actually take this poison jab. But, I think it's kind of what we have to do here. And I'm going to try and body press into this guy. We'll see how this goes. Maybe I should have just doubled attack, but no, it, it, it's ultimately not worth it. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a max guard turn, right? Because if he goes for... Well, it, uh, this also has to be max HP, right? If it's not, if it's anything that's not max HP, then Surfetched potentially Okos this. And he didn't get up screens, so... Um, this is a very good opportunity for Surfetch. We just miss out on the KO. That's brutal. Is that weakness fault? That's weakness. Okay. That's brutal. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm pretty positive that that was a roll. But with... Oh, and I outspeed because of the two... Oh, I hugely misplayed. I made a game-breaking misplay. I made a game-break... Okay, if I lose, it's going to be off based off of that misplay. I 100% forgot about my, my boosts. I just forgot about my boosts. I could have body pre That's a monumental misplay. Okay. See, I'm, I'm, I'm very not used to... I, I'm A, not very used to a, a, a doubles format. And I'm very not used to a, a Gigantamax format. So, I haven't played VGC in, in a very, very long time. But, if I had remembered that, then I think that is a huge... That's a huge opportunity lost. Now, I don't have any double attacking moves, but I can lock myself into Shadow Ball now, right? I can lock myself into Shadow Ball, right? Um, yeah. So it's not impossible to win. It's just I just made it really difficult. Like Surfetch was in the optimal position that it could have been possibly been in, and I just don't like what I just did right now. So I'm going to attempt a Shadow Ball here. And now that I know that Body Press KOs, I, I should just go for the Body Press here. Oh, that is monumentally dumb. That is monumentally dumb. That's not even close. That's not even close. And yeah, that was that was a, that was another monumental misplay because, well, I, I don't know. It, okay, it goes for the explosion. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Um, so I believe the only two mons he has left is Mewtwo and Noivern, which theoretically, my the two mons on the field, well, b well, both mons on the field should outspeed the Noivern, and. It's up to my Chandelure to kind of do what it needs to against this Mewtwo. But I think this Mewtwo will ultimately win it for him. 
I think this Mewtwo will ultimately win it for him. Unless I could get a massive Shadow Ball roll here. But we will see. Because unless this... Um, and yeah, we can Dynamax Cannon into the Noivern. So, I guess the explosion doesn't particularly matter, even though it doesn't affect the Chandelure, because, um, it would have been the same sequence of plays, no matter what he did, I get. Well, no, he could have just clicked Rock Slide, and I think Rock Slide would have kind of done what it needed to do there. I don't know, I don't know. It's a very strange play, especially because I very strongly misplayed there. But basically, I need this to do a whole lot of damage. That is an oak. No, that's a Focus Ash, right? Yeah, it's a Focus Ash. Okay, it's not going to matter because of the sand, I think. Unless this is the last turn of sand. If this is the last turn of sand and I lose in that way, then this will be devastating. This will be devastating. It's actually very potentially the last turn of sand. But yeah, if I if I do lose because I forgot about, if I do lose because I forgot about, um. Hurricane, and, and I don't have a lot of those, like, I, I don't have a lot of that VGC brain where it's, where it's managing boosts because of G-Max. Yeah, okay, I win because of the Sandstorm, okay. That was a very stressful way to win, but we did win. We did win. Um, I don't know, I think, I think I kind of got bailed out by the explosion, but I think I also bailed him out quite a bit by, um, by making that massive, massive... Um, misplay with my Santa Conda. Oh my god, that was so boneheaded. Okay. Oh no, I did, yeah, I, I made sure that my Santa Conda was fast enough to outspeed Mewtwo after two, um, after two airstreams. So I knew that in my head in, in team building, but I just didn't remember that when it came to the actual matchup, right? So if I had remembered that, then I would have known that there's no way that the Grim Snarl beats me in the end, and then I ultimately could have, um, made it out of that interaction alive. But wow, that is... Because potentially, if that does, if that if, if that interaction hap never happens, and I and 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 I'm able to keep my my surfetch on the field, and surfetch is in an amazing position to, to to get a bunch of KOs in that situation, but it would depend on a lot. I don't know, man. That I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really really soon with more weeks of the ABL and more weeks of some singles draft leagues as well. But yeah, I'm as as much in shock as anybody else here. And if that was the last turn of Sandstorm, then I think I just lost straight up. But uh, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to be once again out.